Hello, Trinity family. It's been a while since I've done one of these videos. Uh, we are now doing them on a weekly basis. The videos on encouragement will be up on Wednesdays, where we have been doing them uh, every day of the, the week, the work week, that is. Um, now that we're able to meet together more often, uh, we'll be doing these videos of encouragement, and you'll find them on Wednesdays. And way back when COVID kept us from meeting, Pastor asked me to take the topic of the family. And recently, my focus has been on biblical manhood. And there are three previous videos on this topic. So today will be the fourth. If you would like to see those other three, if you haven't seen them yet, they are on the church's YouTube channel. But I want to continue with that concept of biblical manhood. And today I want to describe a masculine Christianity. It might sound odd at first, but I want you to carefully listen as I present the case for a masculine Christianity. 1 Corinthians 16, 13 says, Be watchful, stand firm in the faith, act like men, be strong. The words you just heard were written to the church that had a significant problem. This is the church of Corinth. Paul addressed those problems in his first epistle to the church. The original recipients of the letter lived in a sinful culture that had a negative impact and influence on their lives. Just to name a few issues that Paul addressed to the church was that they had a significant disunity problem. They had immorality problems. They abused their Christian liberty, and they had jealousies and arguments over the exercise of their spiritual gifts. And after Paul dealt with those problems in the church, he then gave these strong concluding statements. They're military metaphors. Picture a military commander shouting, watch out, stand firm, act like men, be strong. In the middle of these final words to the church at Corinth, Paul gave those short and very direct statements that are all military metaphors that are intended to be marching orders for the church. These words should also be heeded by us. We too live in a sinful culture that has a negative impact and influence on us. If we are to be godly men for Christ in this world and in the church, we must follow these commands. I want to focus on one of those commands, that being, act like men. These words are followed with the words, be strong. Now, let me make a bold statement. There is an undeniable quality of masculinity to Christianity. Would you agree with that? Would you disagree with that? Well, consider this. Masculine pronouns are used for God. God is referred to as a father rather than a mother. God is referred to as a king rather than a queen. Jesus came into the world as a man, not a woman. Jesus is called the son of God, not a daughter of God. An extensive list of masculine references to God would number in the hundreds. One can hardly turn a page of the Old or New Testament without finding masculine references to God. The Psalms are full of them. Jesus is teaching about God majors almost exclusively on God the Father. There is a diverse spectrum of masculine roles, offices, and images to refer to the Godhood. Although not completely fair illustration due to the fact that the word man can refer to mankind in Scripture, it's still worth noting that there are 4,414 uses of the words man and men in the Bible as opposed to 546 uses of the words woman and women. All of the God-appointed leadership in the Bible is male. Old Testament priests were to be men. Old Testament kings were to be men. Jesus chose 12 men to be his disciples, and all the apostles were men. The scriptures instruct churches to choose men to be the overseers of the church. The bishops, elders, pastors, teachers were to be men. Deacons are to be men. Scriptures assign men to be the leaders, protectors, and providers of the home. New Testament scriptures assign masculine qualities to responses to challenges in the Christian life. Words like soldiers and fight, 
there's male dominated athletic imagery instructing us to endure in the Christian life, to persevere, to press forward, and to win. As with our opening verse, there are places in both the Old Testament and New Testament where the instructions are given to act like men, to have courage and fear not. Christianity itself is described as a fight and a warfare. There's about five or six uh, New Testament passages where the Apostle Paul, but not exclusively Paul, uh, uses those words. In my view, there's credibility to this statement that I made that there's an undeniable quality of masculinity to Christianity. Our churches today need men to act like men. They need masculine male leaders. These qualities are necessary in dealing with the spiritual war that every Christian must be engaged in to survive the attacks of Satan. The church at Corinth needed this as they acted very childish and immature at times, arguing with each other about various things and fighting with each other. The Apostle Paul called on the church to grow up spiritually and act like men rather than childishly and immaturely. The implications are to have the qualities of grown men, such as bravery and courage. Again, these are military terms. So Paul is implying that we are to act like brave men and have courage in spiritual battle, as opposed to being cowardly or timid in the face of spiritual enemies. The church today needs the same admonish admonishment. So men, watch out. Be alert and on guard against those things that will harm your spiritual growth or the spiritual growth of your families. Watch out for the snares of the devil, that the sin that can overtake your life. Stand firm, hold on to truth, persevere in your faith and don't deviate from it. Have strong beliefs and form some convictions on the truth of scripture. In other words, act like men, be strong. Don't be weak in your positions. Don't be timid in your beliefs. Approach issues and problems with boldness and courage as a strong man would. Now, although I don't want to make too much out of this and take the thought out of proper context or give it an emphasis that is not intended, I must say it is not a mistake that Paul calls for a masculine quality here. We need Christian men to be strong men of faith, and we need Christian women when needed to be strong and courageous as well. Although our society has softened masculinity, that is not godly. Dads, if you have boys, raise them to have strong masculine qualities. This will prepare them to be strong leaders and servants for God who will not buckle under the first sign of struggle. Masculinity is a good thing, and we need masculine qualities in the Christian faith. Paul calls for it here. Guys, you are not just men. You're Christian men. So act like Christian men. What courageous thing will you do for Christ? Are you, what are your convictions? What do you stand for? Does your wife and children know you as a man of God? How will you lead your family? Will you provide for them and protect them, not just in physical ways, but will you provide for them spiritually? Will you protect them spiritually? That's what Christian men do. Are you a good soldier for Christ? Are you engaged in the spiritual battle? Be watchful, stand firm in the faith, act like men, and be strong.